Welcome back, dreamers. Your host, Ken, here with some exciting news that I just couldn't wait to share. Somewhere in Dreamland now has an amazing new merch store filled with custom Somewhere in Dreamland hoodies, t-shirts, coffee mugs, pint glasses, and much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Why not hop on over to dreamlandpodcast.weebly.com and grab yourself or someone else some custom Dreamland gear now. Dreamers, tonight my guest is the legendary David Eckhart. Over a decade ago, David and his entire family began experiencing strange phenomena in their home. Portals would seemingly open and then close. Strange and scary entities would emerge and then disappear. Soon, abductions would occur and creatures would cart David and his family off to otherworldly places. Armed with a camera and a bit of ingenuity, David began to collect evidence and even talk about his experiences. Little did he know, he would quickly become the subject of research by many paranormal groups and television programs that would try to debunk his claims, leaving them all with more questions than when they began. So without further ado, grab your blankets, turn down the lights, get comfy, and let's fade away into... Hey man, I'm super excited to talk with you. I know you have a quite a history, and um, I, I am so interested in your story and uh, all the, all the things that you've you've collected over the years and captured, and all the just your story is fascinating alone. I mean, we could go on and on probably about the evidence and everything else that you have, but your story alone is just entirely fascinating to me, man. <laughs> That's uh, a lot of people say that is a uh, uh, yeah it is it is fascinating and so uh, and I could I could sum everything up in about four hours summing it up but the details that get missed you know it's like but uh, on everything and all the witnesses and everything else that's uh, been around me when all this is going on and uh, and the investigations that came out you know it's like outcast paranormal they came out and they pretty much walked away like we're coming back with more equipment <laughs> so yeah you work uh, pretty closely with them don't you to to try to figure uh, things out yeah here uh yeah they kind of uh you know grabbed a hold of me and, and wanted to do this uh documentary and and uh and i worked with them on it yeah and i let them have the run of the house whatever they wanted to do and uh and yeah they was catching things on filming and stuff there was uh and weird things were happening to them while they was here and by the time they left they was like severely depressed you know it was like you know it was like because they didn't expect to you know catch what they did so uh it was pretty wild, though, uh, with them having here. I thought there was kind of, you know, the entities would back down, but they was more curious, you know, than ever, you know. So wow. Uh, but yeah, they they they, they come into these portals and everything else, and and then like the reptilians are they ruling everything. Uh, they they're like the Nazis of everything. So and all these other races that are out there, they're like under their thumb, you know, under control by them. So and the the, the culture is like really it's like every man for himself. Uh, they have groups of entities or people, whatever you want to call them. They all work together, like in a like a um, 
like a corporation would, you know, uh, sharing data and everything, but they don't share all the information with everybody else. Uh, you know, they, they, they'll sell it, you know, and they don't call it money, money. They call it capital. Uh, it's, uh, I, you know, everybody goes, oh, how do you know all this stuff? You know, it's like, let's say you went to Disneyland every day for 10 years. And said, you get to know who's taking out the trash and you get to know who's uh, playing Mickey Mouse and who's getting, who's playing who. And, you know, it's like, right. uh, and what's going on? These guys, you, you've been, they've been taking you and, uh, and you've yeah. been learning them just as much as they've been learning you, I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, they, they know all of our weak spots. They, uh, they know, uh, they know more about us than we know about them. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been to the other side. They have taken me and the family. And, uh, you can't just go walk to these, these portals or stargates that they open up. Uh, you gotta be vibrating at the right frequency and they, they get you to do it too. And, uh, they'll carry you out. They don't float you. You would think you was floating, but they carry you. And, uh, it's, it's, uh, I've been on underground caverns. I've been places I swear it was the moon. Uh, some places I don't even know what the hell it was at, but, it, uh, I've seen a lot of cool things and I've seen a lot of scary things. I got seen some things that I just don't know how to talk about. Uh, so. Yeah, your story uh, is fascinating and I want my audience to, to kind of get the gist of it. And I know that you've been over it probably a million times. Um, right. but I'd like to kind of take them if we could short into kind of the history. I know that I, I know my, I've done my homework. I, I know you, I don't know you, but I know your story pretty well. Um, now I know you're originally from my neck of the woods. You're originally from Ohio. Is that right? That's right. That's right. From Ohio, to, yeah. Toledo. And we, bo we both got smart and moved down South, right? <laughs> That's right. <yep. laughs> Cause it's too damn cold up there. It is. And in the daylight, man, I'll tell you, in the wintertime, it's like Christmas Day, it just like stays like dusk all day long. You know, it's like no sunlight. I love the sunlight. Me too, uh, man. Me too. I I tell you, we moved down here to South Carolina two years ago, and it's, you know, even, even in the wintertime, it's sunny, and I love it. Yeah, me too. I love the sun and uh, warm weather. This is like the warmest winter ever, too, for us in Pensacola. So you're not that far away, neither. So no, no, not uh, at all. But yeah, so this boy has been good to us, but that's for sure. But uh, yeah, it, it started when I moved down here. Uh, I mean, I mean, we always had weird things going on when we was kids, you know. But we just kind of blew it off. But when I came down here to uh, Pensacola, me and my buddy Bob, you know, he, uh, we just kind of roommate together, and uh, we hung out and we found some other you know, natives of golf breeds and we'd hang out with them at the parks and stuff and throw some frisbee, you know, like young guys. And then, uh, and then, uh, one of the guys, uh, said his name was Philip and he says, uh, let's go, let's go out in the woods and go build a fire. I know where there's a pond at with the uh, island down it and everything else. It's okay, let's go. So we piled up in his car and we went out there and I was right in the back seat. And, uh, we was going through the woods and, and, uh, we seen something go over the trees, the top of the trees where I did. And, uh, and it was going kind of slow. It wasn't a helicopter. I said, look guys, a UFO. And I was just kidding. You know, it's like, I didn't, you know, and, uh, we just laughed about it and blew it off. And he said, okay, let's go out to the pond, you know? So I got the vehicle and we cut through some briars and stuff like that and get over to the pond and just beautiful area. And, uh, and uh, we've seen this uh, lights out in the woods. I said, no, what's that? And he says, oh, other people come out here too. And I says, oh, okay. So I was worried if it was trespassing or not, but just beautiful property. And then, uh, uh, long story short, it, these lights, uh, there was out in the woods that I thought was people with flashlights were, uh, was an orb. And, uh, I ended up, uh, breaking chase after the, this uh, orb thing. It's, uh, I chased it through the woods for about maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And, uh, it went right down to the pond. It went right into the water. And, uh, a buddy's like, let's get out of here. You know, it's like, so, so he was a native, you know, it's like, he was kind of freaked out about the whole thing. And we was walking down a, a path trying to find the car. And then, uh, right out of the blue, I was like maybe 30 feet in front of these guys and, uh, trying to explain to what these guys, what this orb looked like. And, uh, 
And I looked up, and there was something standing there, and it just stopped moving. And it looked at me, and I, I looked at it, and there was, uh, I was like, is that a deer, an owl, or somebody with a mask on? So I thought it was somebody that had a mask on. And I yelled at it, and it took off running. And I took off running after it, and uh, I caught up to it pretty quick. Uh, I mean, real quick. I could clearly outrun him. He wasn't running very fast, but he was running. You know, he was giving it his all, but I could outrun him. I was going to tackle him, but then I started realizing that this isn't somebody with a mask on. You know, it's like this is uh, pretty crazy. But, uh, you know, I'm looking at the back of his head. And it reminds me of uh, one of those little kids with an old man disease. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it's like I could smell them. I was like I could smell them, and it's like this is not right. So I was, I was just scaring this thing. So I just started backing down, and uh, it kept on running. And then my buddy Bob come up behind me. He said, "Which way to go?" And I said, "Go around the bush that way." And we met up head to head, and we never saw it again. Wow. But, um, now, how big was this thing? Um, see, I'm five, five ten, and uh, so his head was about the size of my. Uh, chest was and his, his head was kind of big but it wasn't huge or anything but it was, it was male proportion to his body because his body was really thin he had like a black jumpsuit on it looked like uh, sort of like a tan looking shoes or whatever but uh, yeah it's just uh, and he wasn't bending at the knees when I was chasing him he's like he's like slinging his legs out in front of him like it just wasn't bending at the knees. It was it looked like a spider or something the way it was running. And uh that kinda of weirded me out too. So but I What did it smell like? So sort of like a, a car car starting fluid, so like an ether smell. Mm. And that's uh yeah, it's this now it wasn't real potent, it's just like the breeze breaking off of them, you know, you could smell them it's like so like a, yeah. The star, car starting for the best way I can describe it. So, your buddy saw your buddy saw this too. Yeah, he saw him, but I mean, he didn't see him as close as I did, you know, because he was like maybe thirty feet back, maybe twenty five feet. Or so, but and I got the head start, you know, so I was chasing this thing, and then he was chasing right after me. He was a, but he could see it, but he just could not make out exactly what it was. You know, he knew we was chasing something. <laughs> so, but yeah. I was right up on this thing. So pretty quick. Uh, wow. but I, then we, yeah, we went back to town and um, we made the mistake of telling everybody we seen. We think we seen an alien and not green. And uh, it's the gray. I didn't even know what gray was, you know. And everybody's like, you know, they show me pictures. Did it look like this? Said, yeah, that's what it looked like. <laughs> it's like, it you know, was, it's like, what year was that around? That was oh, good lord. Uh, you know, I, you would think I would have it written down by now, but uh, I have it. it. It is written down because my buddy Bob, he wrote the story down on a piece of notebook paper, but I got to put up uh, right now. God, it was, it was uh, many years ago. I mean, shoot, I was like 18, 19, something right around that age okay. uh, when it happened. So that was, I'm not going to see my age now because I'm getting kind of old. <laughs> so, But uh, anyways... <laughs> But that was years ago, and uh, and it kind of, you know, for two solid weeks after that night, you know, like I had these dreams, you know, heavy duty dreams about this the whole situation, and uh, back and forth, and uh, I, I believe they came and visited us at the house too, but you know, like I don't have exact proof on anything like that, but I, I think they came and visited me, me and my buddy Bob, uh, and then um. You know, years go by, about 12 years went by, and one of my buddies talked me into doing a hypnotic regression and I'm at the one of these support groups and stuff. So I went ahead and agreed to do it, you know, because I started doubting myself. So maybe I didn't see what I saw, you know, it was like, you know, after 12 or so years. And uh, and so I did hypnotic regression, uh, and the lady was uh, – was actually a school teacher at the same time, and she was a school teacher at the school that – uh, that would Ed Walter's UFO landed out behind his house. Oh wow! Uh, that being Golf Breeze, and um, and she told me that the grass never grew back. It took years for it to grow back. The water just beat off of it, and they had to send the soil in to be analyzed and everything else. They they didn't really get much information out of it, but 
At any rate, uh, well, she did a hypnotic regression. From the, I remembered everything I remembered, you know, and I got to, this is pretty cool because I got to live it through my eyes, you know, not as a bystander, but, you know, look it through my eyes and everything I saw in, in detail. So, but uh, that's how the hypnotic regression went. It went pretty good, so. Now, um, did you, when you moved to Golf Breeze, were you aware that that was kind of a hot spot for this type of activity? No, we didn't even give it a second thought, man. We were just coming down here to get some sun rays, you know, just uh, hang out and move to Florida. And uh, and uh, that's what we did. And uh, I, I didn't know it was a hot spot or anything like that. It was just but, uh, not until later on. But, you know, Ed Walters lived in Gulf Breeze. He got pictures of the UFO, and which is a real UFO. People say, oh, he had a paper plate and all that stuff was planted up there and up in his attic, you know, after he moved out of the house. But you can get in the garage and through the attic right through there easily. So somebody planted it there. And um, I, I think it was probably the city uh, manager or somebody probably, you know, paid somebody to do it because they got tired of all the people coming from around the world to Golf Breeze because it was a UFO hotspot. And, uh, you know, I, I never even gave you a second thought, you know, about UFOs and stuff like that. It's really, but, and, but they're real. And so, and I, I seen that craft. Um, but anyways, um, you know, years go by, you know, you know, I started a business for myself and everything else. And, uh, and it was doing really well, and, and uh, you think everything worked out. You know, we bought this uh, great big house out there in Milton, Florida, and uh, and, uh, and that's when things were really starting to get crazy out there. You know, I was doing a lot of traveling at that time too, back from forth up to Ohio, and weddings and everything else. My younger sisters getting married and everything else, and. Uh, and my wife moved everything into the new house and uh, I was out of town and she did a good job, but it got back. She said, well, we're hearing all kinds of things going on in the house. You know, it's like, well, maybe it's a haunted house. You know, it's like, I was just kidding, you know, but, yeah. uh, <laughs> but uh, it ended up to be a little bit crazier than that. Uh, you know, cause this house was out in the middle of uh, 17 acres of woods, you know, it was all by itself. You could drive down this trail and come out to this opening and there's this house out there and it's just, gorgeous you know wow. and, and uh so uh it was like they're all by ourselves you could yell yell and nobody could hear you but anyway but they developed all the way around it anyways but um uh that's that's you know things start will start happening around our house and stuff and you know i come home from work and stuff and my wife she'd be uh say man nobody's sleeping you know it's like uh this thing's happening in the house. I'm hearing noises and everything else. And, and I just kept, uh, you know, telling her to ignore it. You know, I didn't know what to tell her. I was busy with the business, you know? And, yeah. Uh, you did the typical, home, the typical guy thing, you know? Exactly. I mean, we, so we live in a dream. And, uh, and then, uh, I come home one night and, uh, she, uh, met me at the door and she was white as a ghost. And, uh, I said, what's wrong? And she said, David, I said, I'm seeing people walk through the house. By this time, she thinks she's losing her mind. And, uh, and I was like, and I just tell her, I always her, ignore it. You know, this is my house. You know, I was like, nobody's going to live here but us. But uh, at any rate, well, she started almost crying. So I had to do something about it. I had to figure out what the hell was going on because, you know, the kids were complaining too. So, um uh, so I started doing research on haunted houses, poltergeists, which sounded just like poltergeists and haunted houses and everything. They almost had me convinced uh, that it was, you know. And through my research and, and everything, I was getting convinced. And, and my wife was had this Polaroid camera. She was just taking random pictures around where the cats were acting funny and uh, and in the bathroom window upstairs, you know, which is two stories up in there. She got a picture that looked like from people from the flame boy in the 30s looking in the window, but they look kind of messed up. And, uh, that caught my attention. So, um, my son ended up getting a VHS camera, which, uh, it was just, you know, you can get a good one for really cheap at that time. But, uh, so he started filming and I was helping him film, trying to come up with ideas to try to see if we capture something else. And, uh, we would catch the apparitions, you know, so, 
but the, you know, it was like you could say it was this or that. You know, it was like uh, it just wasn't really clear. And uh, then I ended up buying a Hitachi 800 zoom uh, DVD digital camera, uh, and that's when uh, we started getting some better footage on what was going on. I said, no, so it's like, but we still thinking there was ghosts at that point too. But one day I was out working at my pole barn on my truck and I came in, it was about nine 30 in the morning and I came in my bedroom to go use the restroom. And right where my TV was, there was like a hole opened up mm. and I stopped and I'm looking inside this hole. It's like an egg shaped hole, about maybe two foot by a foot and a half tall, you know? And, uh, I'm looking down in there and there's like the concrete floors with, with striped paint and everything painted on the floors where you could walk where you couldn't walk and buzzers going off and people dressing up. The people that my wife got a picture of looking in the windows, they was dressed up and they had cameras down there. Uh, and they're dressed up just like from the flame boy in thirties, but they're reptilians. That's why they look messed up. And they had every room in my house, uh, staged out uh, it was all along this one wall i don't know if you could pull out each pod of my room you know of every room in my house or if they just filmed it like that i don't know but it was pretty wild i'm like what the hell is going on here so, and i was so mad that they had me convinced it was a ghost uh I was I was just terribly mad because I just didn't believe in ghosts at that time. And then uh, I started yelling, they're not ghosts, they're not ghosts. And I was like, settle down, settle down. I said, they're not ghosts. I did, at that point, I didn't know who they were or what they were. But uh, I knew they wasn't ghosts anymore. So, um, but, you know, and, you know, other things would happen. Like, my wife would wake me up in the middle of the night and be like, uh, 2.30 in the morning, but the room would be lit up a, a pink or a blue. You couldn't tell where the light was coming from. It'd just be lit up. And, uh, and then it'd slowly dim down, you know, as, it'd be until it was dark again. It was like, it was really weird. Mm. And uh, you could be laying in bed at night and uh, you could hear people whispering back and forth right over your head. <laughs> it's like, uh, you sit up nobody's there or stuff where you slam it in the kitchen and you get up running in the kitchen and nothing's going on. And uh, this is something that uh, we never talked about. Neither we had fish, you know, like some goldfish, and our daughter had one of these uh, uh, sucker fish that was stuck on the side of the glass, you know. Yeah. And uh, well, something was eating the fish. I mean, overnight. I mean, there would be nothing but bones left on the bottom of the fish aquarium. Wow. And that was the delicacy was that fish right there. Uh, and the water would be like milky gray in the morning time, and it would be just a carcass laying on the bottom with just bones, all in one piece. Wow. Uh, stripped of every bit of the uh, flesh and muscle and everything out that thing. It's like, uh, we, so we kept buying them, and uh, so we kept eating them. And it, all there was was like two other goldfish in there and a snail and that other fish, and it was overnight. It would just strip it down, no flesh on the bones or anything. So... Wow. Now, this portal right. that you saw open, how how long did it stay open in front of you? Uh, shoot, man, so many times. Uh, man, many, many, many times it's uh, opened up and, uh, and they, they come on through. One time uh, I was laying in bed pretending I was asleep. These guys were predictable. There's uh, creatures of habit. And you know, all you do is pretend you're asleep and they uh, hurry up and come on in and do what they're going to do. And uh, I was I heard him come in the house and uh, come out of my bathroom and he went upstairs and uh, you hear the footsteps. And uh, I'm laying down in bed pretending I'm asleep. And they bring my daughter down and my son and they lay him across the foot of my bed, crisscrossed. It's like still asleep or in a comatose state or whatever. And, uh, and my wife is still asleep. And, and I sat up in the bed and there was a female reptilian. And she's looking at me with this smirk on her face. And uh, she had like this little apprentice guy next to her. And he asked me, does this bother you? And I didn't want to blow it. You know, I was like, no, I, I trust you. And uh, they turned around and start walking out to this portal, Stargate. And it was, uh, it looked like uh, like the snow on a TV screen at this time. I was like, you know, but it was green, green looking color. You know, how you had the, uh, 
the static or whatever it is on the TV, but they just as they're walking through it, I, I said, why are you doing this? And uh, the female sticks her finger up in the air and says, oh, because you're special. And then they pick up the entire bed, uh, eight of them or nine of them. Yeah, there's nine of them, reptilians pick up the entire bed and towed us through this uh, portal of Stargate. But what they didn't know, the, the camera was still rolling. So... I got that on camera too, wow. and uh, and they uh, after the bed was gone out of the room. And this was just not no little bed. This is a California king with big old columns. I mean, it was huge bed, and uh, they took it right through there. And uh, but and put us on this like this train car thing, and uh, and it was toting us around that way for a while. And then they they separated us, and then uh. But we, it seemed like we was gone forever. I mean, all night long we was. And uh, finally, when they let us come back, you know, you go there awake and come back to sleep. But uh, uh, Do you remember anything that happened? What What did they take you for? Uh, I, they, they took me and my wife. Uh, I don't know what they do with the kids, but they... It was like, I remember seeing a bullet train down there, and it was like a big area, and they put me in this, like, uh this gurney with like a plastic over it. There sometimes they'd wrap you up in this like yellow looking cellophane. Uh I guess there's germ conscious or something like that. But uh but I remember I was in this like little pod of you know, plastic it was kinda like drooped around me and I was in an Indian style and uh they wheeled me out and it was like like this like a town or something underground. It was with big old caverns and tunnels going down to the but you could tell it was carved out, you know on purpose and they was bringing these reptilians bring their kids up to uh me i'm sitting there indian style i'm naked and uh and they're putting a hand on the plastic i put my hand on it too and it, you feel you know the reptilians are cold feeling uh but uh then they came and got me from there and they took me over by where this bullet train was then coming out of a wall where uh cavern was and uh took me up on a platform and it was like like a table in there, and they had like a beakers and, and scientific stuff in there. They'd be on the table, and they was checking me out, and I could hear my wife calling my name out uh, down the hallway. They had her there too, and uh, I just didn't respond. I knew she was gonna be okay, but uh, sounds terrible. But I, I wasn't moving or going anywhere. But I was looking for anything I could take, <laughs> so I was looking at everything. But uh, when they when uh, they was done with us, they they brought us back, and I was asleep, and I, we both came through at the same time, and uh, and and I was like, and I checked the video recorder, and it was on there. And I was like, me and my wife was like, uh oh, I think we lost him. Yep. See if we can get him back. Hey, hey! I lo we I lost each happened. other. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Uh, I was like, and my phone was like restarting. Oh, that was weird. That is weird, man. Yeah. Somebody yeah. doesn't like but, it. That's it. They don't like me talking. <laughs> um, I don't even know where I lost you at. So. Um, it was your. You were talking about your wife, and you guys got him on. Got it on camera. Oh yeah, the the smoking gun. Yeah, and uh. I remember I, I got out of bed and I eased over to my camera and I pulled the DVD out and uh, I I went to my uh, closet and, and grabbed a random book out of the closet and threw it in there and uh, and let it go. Went back to bed. It was gone by morning time. Really? But yeah, it was gone. But it was really good. It was really good. My daughter-in-law actually got the best footage. Uh, that I've ever seen, and I was scared for it that she had to get it off the phone. Get it off the phone now. I think she thought I was going to try to keep it, but uh, she said, well, I, was always, I always thought you was full of shit until this. Until now, I was like, said, get it off your phone. I'm telling you. So, but uh, we, as soon as we started downloading it, we are going to send it over to Lon Strickler. And, uh, and it was, it was, it just it vanished between downloading it was, I did a forensic on the phone it was like it never even happened she she wow. brought it out to me it was, like, it was like super clear super good I was like I was I was impressed but you but, started uh, trying to sneak a camera in with you when they would take you didn't you 
Yeah, I tried to, and uh, yeah, and I got some footage, but it doesn't last very long because it, it cooks the the cameras. Anything that has metal to it, uh, you go through the portal, it'll burn you. It doesn't do very well going through, but uh, but anything else, you know, organic material does fairly well. So going wow. through there, but I know yeah. you do have some pretty good footage, and uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about. How you how you go about getting this footage because these creatures they're we you're thinking they're in the fourth dimension is that correct right yeah and they're coming here to the third so and so, uh, and to capture a fourth dimensional entity or creature or anything from the fourth dimension they're using a three dimensional camera is a trick so it's so not easy so um I I was uh, trying everything to try to get better image and clearer image and and I learned that uh that a DVD and was working, you know, at first and then uh and I tried to find out well why is it work? Well DVD's got aluminum uh in it and silver. So that that works pretty good. It produces an image of them. And then uh I try to get better and better at, you know, things I would try would um do aluminum flow, they look more cartoonish. Uh, so, but one night I was laying in bed and I had a glass of wine next to me and, uh, and, you know, there's always a light on my room now. Uh, so but I could see what's going on. And I noticed my wine glass, I could see movement in there. So I started focusing in on it and it's like, I could see them really good. And I look, look at the room. I couldn't see them. But I could see them in the wine glass, you know, through the reflection of the glass. And, uh, you know, it took me a while to figure out exactly how, why that was working, but. I perfected it. I put silver in the water in a, in a one gallon jug now. Uh, you know, colonial silver. And, uh, and I'm getting some pretty clear images that way, but I use like three, four different techniques in case one isn't working because they can't accommodate for all of them, you know, because their visibility or cloaking device has got. And, uh, so I can always get some kind of picture. I do a lot of my pictures as reconnaissance so I can, keep up with them because they're always showing up. They're always coming. So I know know, that we mentioned vibrations earlier. Do you think that that's how they cloak themselves with, with the vibrations? That could could be very well part of it. That's very good. uh, Very good hypothesis. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure they are because they're they're bending light around them and, uh, and they can turn it up or turn it down, you know, to make them more invisible, but they can't see through their own invisibility. And, uh, so their eyes would be uncovered. So if you walk by and you see a set of eyes, <laughs> you know, that's them right there. Wow. And, uh, which is really funny because Dr. Mutual Kaku, I was listening to one of his uh, presentations. He says, when we invent invis- invisibility, says you will not be able to cover your eyes because you won't be able to see through your own invisibility. I'm like, how does this guy know this? That is like, I mean, do math or something? If we don't have invisibility already, how would he know that? Yeah. Uh, that's what blows my mind. But uh, and I was going to do a radio show. I was, they were trying to set me up to do a radio show with them, and I was going to actually ask them that question. But um, that's that really too. That's really interesting. Uh, I mean, it it really is. Your whole story is is interesting, David. I mean, it's 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 crazy, man. It it's 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 awesome, but it's crazy, you know. It, it is, and that's a lot of these uh you know people that said out oh, they're here to save us and all this other stuff. And it's like I don't know where they get all this stuff from, but these people or entities are a lot like us. I mean, a lot like us. They conduct themselves pretty much like us. Uh, uh, they they uh, they talk. They speak English, I and mean, I'm sure they got their own language as well. But um, they speak in English. Um, they have a hierarchy, you know. And, uh, they but they don't have like they don't have like a, a school system like we got for our children, or or uh, they, we live way better than they do. I, I would say from what I've seen, we do, unless you're royalty and they go by the DNA and everything over there. But, now, um, is it always the reptilians that you see, or do you see other? No, other... multiple. Yeah, you know, multiple. Over about 50 different species I've probably come across. And I'm only calling them a species because 
I see more than one of them in the, and I, I don't even know if the, uh, if the, uh, uh, we call it the, the grays. I don't know if they're, uh, are you there? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, I thought I lost you. I don't, I don't know if the grays are, are uh, a species or not, but there's a bunch of them, but they're not always involved in everything. They're always like on the sidelines and they don't speak much, but they do speak. I don't care what anybody says, they do speak and they all don't look the same. Um, and they do eat. They will bleed and they will die. But, uh, um, where is that? Where is that with this? But, uh, now, I know that you had Outcast yeah. Paranormal. You work with them really close. Um, you also had the, the TV show Fact or Fake come out, the Paranormal Files. Right. And I did another one for uh, uh, Chris Turner uh, in England. And uh, there's, don't mention the reptilians, too. He did an interview with me about that. Uh, and I, I speak about some of the stuff that is kind of scary to most people, but. Uh, you know, where they take me up into a clean room and, uh, put me on the table. And, uh, I seen, uh, a bunch of, uh, colors going by this window. And, uh, I get, you know, curiosity got the best of me. So I got off the table and went over to this window. And it's like inside of this huge cavern. Uh, but it, everything seemed like it was low gravity though. And there's some, they had some big burners down there. And, uh, they had like this smaller, uh, worker race, uh, reptilians. And, uh, and there was a platform above the unit that I was on and, and there was like a bunch of people standing up there and it was like malnutrition and, uh, looked like they were sick, you know, and it was wearing like corduroy pants and, and uh, like hand me down clothing. And, uh, somebody was pushing them off and, or something was going on. And as it was falling, these things would come out of the walls, like conduit and, uh, jab on each side of the leg and vacuum all the fluids out of the bodies and it would continue to fall all down to the floor and uh this big thing that was mounted to the ceiling would come over it looked like a half of a moon you know steel ball and it would vacuum up the bodies and, big, and then carry them over closer to the um burners but these big things would just toss the bodies into these burners so like maybe eight or nine of these burners going down to the but it was just a huge cavern like wow and, uh, and if it wasn't low gravity, I was like thinking maybe I'm on the moon. But what was really bothering me is they had tile in this room. They had doors like we use. Uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, they're using a lot of the stuff that we're using. And like like it was made here. So and I don't see no factories where they're at from what I've seen. I don't see no factories. So I think somebody's supplying these guys this stuff. Uh you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was, I was getting upset when I'm looking at this stuff, you know, because some of the doors that like, you'd see on a school building, you know, you could hit with your hip and it opens up, you know, uh, with the handle on it, you know, the old school kind of door handles. Uh, and then uh, the tile that's on the ceiling and on the floors, the gurney, the bed I was laying on. Uh, it's like everything that we make. And I've seen uh, they had golf carts down there as well. Um, wow. I seen an uh, old model A4 that was still running. Um, a lot of antiques I seen down there. And these bullet trains, you can tell this is pretty, uh, pretty new. Rode on a single rail, magnetized, you know, it just it would float above this stuff, but oh my God. But um, So that would I'm pretty thinking, much lend itself yeah. to say that um, either they're working close with somebody from here, maybe our government, or mm -hmm. what do you think about them possibly being us from in the future? Yeah, I've I've, I've fondled that uh, idea for a long time because they know the future, they know what's going to happen, and they they know what's happened in the past because they can travel back and forth in the future in the past, uh, and they showed me some things and. uh so and everything that they I've overheard them talking about or, or they showed me has come true so far. So uh, they're right on the, right on cue with this stuff. So they could be a soon in the future because they're wearing costumes. Ever since I did that fact or fake show, they're wearing costumes now, the disguises. Wow. I, and they, and some of them look scary, but they're really not really scary up underneath them. But um. 
So that show yeah. really warranted no evidence. They couldn't prove anything. They couldn't disprove anything either, could they? No, no, they couldn't prove anything. They couldn't disprove, but uh, except for what they experienced themselves, uh, did the factor fake. And, uh, and they told me that that was coming, but they, the way they sounded like there was, uh, gonna be something, you know, a little bit more different than what was going on, but it could have been. I just missed it all, but, um, they got a secret investigation that was going a little further than what they was doing on the show, but. <clears throat> But that's what, the way they was making it sound like, you know, the entities, because when I was over here, I'm talking about it. But as far as I know, it just happened just like the show said, you know. So, but, yeah. you know, plus plus the worms that came up out of the ground, it was like 12 degrees outside. I mean, it was like brutal cold. And uh, the worms came out of the ground in mass numbers, you know, as soon as everything happened. And, uh, and that's just. You just don't do that. No, that's insane. Don't do that when it's that cold. Yeah, no, the ground's almost frozen, you know, so. But it was coming out of the ground. It was like I told him, I would have like hundreds of thousands of these worms just crossing my driveway, getting out of my yard. Uh, and it's like, you wouldn't think there's that many worms in your, your lawn, you know? It's like, and I drove over them the first time, and I just made a mess out of it. So I would hose them off in the morning time before I went to work. Cause, so I wouldn't smash them in the driveway, but. Uh, yeah, crazy stuff like that would happen. <laughs> that is crazy. But yeah, they, so they got that on video, and that kind of weirded everybody out. But and yeah, um, that's for normal. Yeah, uh, when they came to this house uh, where I'm at now, it's not the same house. But uh, yeah, they they caught some stuff. So I don't. They're still editing and everything else. But they're coming back because it's going to be a continued investigation until we get to the total bottom of it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. So I want to go back to your family for a minute. You know, you said okay. your family's been taken several times. Um, do they remember anything from their, from being taken at all? Uh, my son remembers just before uh, they were starting to take take us one time. And uh, and it feels really good when they go to take it because you get this floating sensation and you get like uh, this vibrating going on in your torso and your legs and body. and. Uh, and then you feel like you're being lifted up. Well, um, at this point, we had the kids sleeping in our room. Me and my son was sleeping on the floor, and my wife and daughter sleeping up in the bed. And and uh, all of a sudden, my son, because I was feeling the same thing at the same time he was, and he started screaming. And I jumped up and I jumped on top of him. You know, I was like, so you know, so let him feel safe because it feels really good. But you just like kind of let it happen, you know that you know it's happening. But uh, he he just broke out and screaming, and, and I snapped out of it, and I just jumped on top of him, so uh, nothing would happen, and it was all over with right there. So, uh, but yeah, he he had his own visitations even after he moved out, and uh, my daughter she don't like to talk about it very often. She will, but she just don't like to talk about it. And I was like, there's a reason why the government keeps this stuff secret because. It's easier to deny it than to explain it, and, and that's uh, it's not my job to do it. But I seem to it has landed in my lap, <laughs> so yeah. so to speak. So, but yeah, it's it's uh, it could be uh, it could be us in the in the fourth dimension. And right now, I, my understanding of things, uh, and I'm not saying that. that by all means, that's supposed to be, but we're supposed to be ascending at this point into the fifth dimension, all of us, and uh, what's not happening. So, mm. and these guys are trying to get there too. So, and uh, they're also looking for this uh, code that's in the DNA of everybody uh, that it kind of gives you the God status. If you have, you ever see that movie Prometheus? Yeah. You remember the God in the beginning of that movie? Uh, he drank the stuff and, it, and it, uh, he de like he deteriorated and fell into the water and, and and sprouted life, you know, in the water and everything and where everything started. Well, it's sort of like how when God made us, uh, that that it just uh, you know it, each code of his DNA went into something and turned into something, and all the races of the world has this code in them and uh, these, you have to bring everybody together in order for this code to come together so you can become God like God like uh, so that's uh, that's pretty much what they're looking for is uh, 
Plaza here. Okay. Looking for this code. So all the races of the world had to come together and they, you know, they talk about this junk DNA that we have. Uh, uh, but they're, they're looking for this code and we all come together. We can decipher the code and put it all together and we can create like God. We'll be God's ourselves. But we had to earn it. So we had to uh, tolerate everybody has to tolerate each other uh, or come together to, to do to do this. And they're skipping out on it. They're trying to get this code before us or whatever. They're, this is what they're looking for. That's on, you know, this store. Okay. Um, now they've done multiple uh, medical experiments on you or uh, uh, healings even, right? Yes. Yeah, I was uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which they can't do nothing for you for me. You know, it's like there's a nightmare. It's like as soon as you quit moving, you start locking up, and the pain kicks in. I couldn't even stand to be hugged by my kids. I couldn't stand to be touched because uh, it hurt so bad. But uh, these guys found it worthy. That was worthy enough to fix. Uh, and they had to go through like uh, three or four different channels to okay the surgery. Which I didn't know what they was doing at the time. All I remember is the last guy said, "Okay, let's do it." And uh, so, at any rate, uh, they started taking me every single night of the week, and uh, they was doing surgeries. I mean, they was re- repairing the damage, and they and they shut down the uh, process of the rheumatoid arthritis. And uh, yeah, I tell you, I feel like it's twenty years old again. It took about a whole thousand, about seven days for them to do the surgeries. Wow! And uh. That's Russian too. It was Russian big time. So, what kind of and, uh, what kind of stuff did they do? Like, like what? Well, the the process of uh, I didn't know what they were doing at the time when they were doing it. I thought they were gonna they were just killing me or, or making a clone or whatever. I Man, I did not know, but uh, at the time, but the the process of uh, what they were doing for the surgery without leaving scars was they take that like if they was working on one leg. I mean, they would take all the hair off of one leg and transfer and uh, transplant it on the other side of the leg uh, and other hair follicles to keep it alive. But they couldn't save the top layer of skin, so they had these things that looked like a bunch of needles on it, and they were running across there, and then the skin would just peel up, uh, first layer. And uh, then they had this leech-looking thing that would uh, clean up the uh, dead skin, and then they would just start making incisions from there, and they would take it apart piece by piece, layer by layer, number everything in like a puzzle. And uh, we kept putting it on the trays and they would carry it off, put it on tray, they carry it off, put it on tray, they carry it off. Well, uh, then they're down to the bone. I could see my bones and my leg and everything. Uh, and one time I got up during the surgery because if it wasn't real, it wasn't going to matter if I got up or not. And uh, they started strapping me down uh, after that, needless to say, but they had to come and get me. Um, and they was even joking about it. <laughs> so, but uh, they was and uh, well, anyways, there was you could feel the uh, the pressure of them, you know, working on the bones and the, the grinding the bones down and stuff and separating the bones and, and you feel the uh, you can see the bone dust in the air and the, and the, uh, you know in the lights and everything, you smell it, and uh, then when you go put you back together after they done did all the repairs, they go back together all the same way, everything's numbered. And then uh, uh, they had this uh, grayish clear liquid that they would dump on your, on my leg or whatever part of my body. And I guess that has nanotechnology in it or something that holds everything together and, uh, and, and accelerates the healing process. Uh, they just dump it all over the leg and then uh, send you back. Uh, no, the, the surgery is done. And uh, for the next day, you know, you, my leg would be like, bright red, you know, it was like you sore, but after about so many hours, it, it'd go back to normal again, like it never even happened. Hmm. So, um, so leave no scars, but under a black light, I could see scars, but you can't see scars just looking at it unless you're looking for it, I guess. But Now, had yeah, you gone to the scars. doctor for this beforehand? Uh, no, I was going to the doctor for my rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, I was going to a specialist and everything. So, and my doctor said, "Hey, you quit work because you're going to end up in a wheelchair." Okay, well, and rheumatoid arthritis can go into remission for about seven years. Okay, but the seven years is like the longest it's ever. You know, it goes back into you know doing his job again. But uh, it's been 
it's been way over seven years. It's been about maybe 12 or 13 years now since I've had an episode. So, And I feel like I'm 20 years old again, so no problem. Uh, I haven't been back to the doctor or anything. So, Wow. I do uh, heavy construction too, so. Uh, I would be curious to see what your what your doctor would I mean did you did you inform your doctor that you were good or uh, yeah I thought I was feeling better and he's like he wasn't believing me or she wasn't believing me neither but uh heck I even had my hand crushed one time uh it was crushed by 8,000 pounds and then shoved my thumb up inside my index fingers uh they didn't even know they was going to be able to save it they was going to amputate it and uh a neurosurgeon was just getting out of surgery and they asked him if he would take me on. Uh, they, they did like three hours of surgery on my hand, just to put it back together. They pulled out all these veins and he said, no, we still don't think you're going to be able to keep your hand, but we're going to see what happens. Well, I still have my hand to this day. I think these, these guys interfered and, uh, and helped me with the hand because there's a female with half the lacerations to her hand get caught in the machine and she never regained use of it. I got full use of my hand. Hmm. Uh, and the doctor that worked on it, uh, he's dead now. He died at 57, but he was always amazed at how well I healed. He's like, he just stare at my hand for hours. You know, was like, like you always check it out, look back and forth on it. I was like, I spent a whole year in therapy just to get it moving again. Uh, yeah. Feels pretty good now, except for when it gets cold, it goes to aching. But that's about it. That's that's crazy, man. Yeah, I know. It's like I was I was blessed. I almost got him walked out of the hospital, but they already uh, hit me with like two shots of Demerol and gave me like four pills of Demerol, and I wasn't going much of anywhere. <laughs> wow. But uh, man, I was like some of the best sleep I got too, man. But, that, that's insane, man. Yeah, I mean, your story is 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 amazing man it really is and you know you can you post a lot of your evidence as well don't you yeah i get i get photos every single day i just about take photos of i got i got over ten thousand photos and some of them you know they're, they're kind of blurry you know like and some people say, could you explain this I, I don't understand all that but uh yeah i guess you just have to know the story for because i get tired of explaining it over and over and over again I'll bet. for I'll bet. every individual out there. But uh, uh, but the people could do the research and, and there's a big write up on the, uh, on the internet uh, about me too. And it does the whole story too. And plus Lon Stricker put me in a couple of his books. Uh, you, know, you can buy some of his books too. Um, uh, Alien Disclosure is one of them. Um, but yeah, Lon yeah. does great work, man. I, I, uh, I got to interview Lon on my show, and it was, he's a, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy, yeah. He stuck his neck out long and hard for me uh, for a long time. He took a lot of abuse over me, too, because, you know, UFOlogy, this, they would not talk about dimensional creatures. You know, it was always in the background. But since I put all this out there, they kind of come around. Now they're not spinning their tires in the mud and they're starting to talk again, you know, between science and, and UFOlogy because science don't like to touch it. You know, it's like uh, nobody likes to touch this kind of stuff. But now everybody's starting to come over to, okay, maybe they're not traveling such a long distance. Maybe it's dimensional. And yeah, it is dimensional. Bigfoot's dimensional. The Mothman's dimensional. It's, uh, they're all coming from the same place. They're all working together. Um, have you ever seen anything that resembled a Bigfoot on your... Oh, yeah, many, there's yeah, a bunch of them. And uh, there's a Cyclops as well. I got a picture of one. Um, you know, like, he looks like a Cyclops between Bigfoot and uh, the Abominable Snowman. But he's a Cyclops because he's got one eye. Um, yeah, so wow. I got pictures. I posted it on my TikTok. Um, but yeah, I have to look right. I should, uh, I should point it out for people that can't see very well but it's a pretty clear picture of it though yeah it's, yeah, it's a cool picture i actually have seen it it's it's really awesome okay and uh i got a uh, i got pictures of what uh a device that they would get in that they fly and it looks like a it could be the moth man it's a device it's actually the entities inside of it flying around in these things it flaps its wings and everything wow and uh and so I, it's a mechanical device that they're getting in that's uh, everybody's portraying to be the Mothman, but uh, and so that's 
all these guys, all these cryptids and stuff in these haunted houses, these are entities that's hiding from their own kind. And they're uh, inhabiting these houses that nobody's living in and stuff or, you know, they're haunted, you know, you listen as haunted houses. But it's actually an entity hiding from the rest of the entities, you know, so from the fourth dimension, but since you're from the fourth dimension, you can see these natural portholes. You build up because you see the energy signature. You can stand on one side of a house and see all four sides of it. You would be able to read somebody's thought. You know, that would come all natural. Um, and we see everything as solid, and they don't see everything as solid. It's mostly empty space to them. So, uh, Interesting. And they're, yeah, and they're, all their technology is based on this. They have holograms. They have... Uh, the UFOs and their technology of flying it all comes from the fourth dimension. So, and how things work there. So, um, everything's so, very mechanical here. So, do you think that the fourth dimension or these creatures from the fourth dimension are just always around us? Is that is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, and then, well, I think it's ramping up. It's uh, really been ramping up here. Because I think we're supposed to be ascending into the fifth dimension, and they're trying to hit a ride to the fifth. But uh, uh but yes, yeah, there's a lot more people than me is starting to this is starting to happen to, and they're they're starting to get pictures and stuff like I am. But uh, uh so yeah, I think they're uh, we're all supposed to be ascending right now at this time, a period of time of uh everything because. I mean, I'm talking to like, I know like eight people now that's uh, having this going on. Uh, same thing. They described and talked the same, same stuff, same lingual, uh, everything is going on. So, uh, wow. Um, so I'm not like the only one. And this is happening all around the world too. So I'm going to, you're going to see a lot more of this, uh, I believe, as we go into it. But, do you think it's right now just certain people that they're allowing to see them or certain people they're interested in or? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Certain people right now, that, that would be the first hit. And, you know, it's like, um, yeah, when I was paranormal, it was doing a, a EMV or something like that uh, where you could talk to like they say for spirits and stuff. Yeah. But uh, we got, we got some interesting stuff, information off of them, but, uh, one of them was, was, uh, why are you here? You know, what is it? The, you will find out, you know, it's like, how long will you be with me till the end? Whenever the end is, I don't know. So, um, I go down there. I think they think I'm going to do something that may be, uh, going to influence somebody else or influence the future on how things come together. But, um, uh, no, um, that's what, what we're thinking, but we're not sure uh, right. because knowing the future changes the future. So if they tell me I could like change my mind and do something totally different. So, right. Um, whatever role I'm going to play, I'm going to play it out. So has there ever been any uh, repercussions for speaking out on it or maybe for trying to dig and investigate on it yourself? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I, I've done a lot of my own investigation as well. Uh, yeah. They've, uh, they got mad at me. Uh, I made them mad and they thought they had one of my guns one time and I was going to trick them and try to get them on a video. And, uh, and I put a spotlight on them. Every dude, I, I tricked them like I was leaving, but I came back in the house really quick and, uh, hit them with the spotlight and all of a sudden it sounded like a gunshot going off and I hit the deck. Oh my God, they got one of my guns. You know, I was like, but, uh, for about a week, they would do that right out of the random because they got a kick out of it because they got a reaction out of me. But, um, but yeah, they, uh, I was messing around with them at one time and, uh, really hard. I was messing with them, you know, just to see how much they could take. And, and they, uh, brought my, uh, daughter that they made genetically from me on in front of me. She's like behind this green looking glass and, uh, and they're like, yeah, I keep screwing around and she's going to get it, buddy. But, uh, so they got leverage on me on that aspect. So, so they, they, you have now, let's go back to that for a minute. Cause that's interesting. They, they have a, you have a daughter with like, how does that work? Tell me about that. Uh, evidently, uh, well, they, they bred me with a lot of, uh, females. Um, I don't ever feel nothing, but you can see what's going on. And, uh, yeah, and I've, 
I seen three of my daughters that was over there. Uh, they they make uh, they make children that have they like talent in children. And they'll, they'll sell them off in an auction, like for uh, you know entertainment, or whatever. If they can sing or if they can tell jokes, or whatever, you know, or clean or whatever. They they like them with talent and uh, plus a living doll for their children. Wow. You know, hum, humans are like created uh, created mostly like you no. Know, from the reptilians, they're like third class citizens over there. That's from the reptilians, that is. And it's usually the reptilians selling off the human children. So Yet they need us um, to ascend, right? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah I know. It. And uh, I've, seen, uh, I've seen some uh, children down there, some little girls that look like little princesses. They haven't dressed up like little princesses. They all look exactly the same with big old eyes on them and everything. And, uh, Really pretty, but um, yeah, they they uh, were a commodity with them too. So wow, um, they made their profiting from us too. So when they yeah. when you say they bred you with, do they breed you with other humans, or do they breed you with extraterrestrials or these uh, well, entities? Well, one of my the very first one that was was a reptilian, uh, a young female reptilian, and uh, she looked more like a snake type. Not to say I like scalies on, but you tell she was young too. Um, and then, uh, then, then they start bringing me human females. Um, but, and they always would scrub them up. It was like, like they don't want to spread no germs or anything. So they, I, I couldn't see the face, but I could see the body, you know, so you can kind of make out what was going on. Yeah. But, um, and you don't feel nothing. So, either, but you, they get on the, Get on the bed, you can see the bed mashing, or they're walking on it, and uh, the blankets mashed down, and, and they're jumping off the bed and stuff like that. And but, uh, it gets crazy. <laughs> I'll tell you, it gets crazy. Well, that's no fun, uh, man. I don't like that. I like, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, what you're going to do is uh, well, it'd be nice to feel it at least, you know, but, <laughs> right. anyways, but uh, it, it does, it gets crazy sometimes. I mean, really, I had them throw stuff at me uh, from me trying to get video of them. Stuff would fly across the room and hit me, and it's like my wife would be like, get back in bed. You know, it's like, wow. okay. No, but I didn't do it. But anyways, but. uh, No, man, your, your story is awesome, David. And uh, I'll tell you, man, I really appreciate you coming on and talking with me. I really do. I know you're a busy man and you, you don't have a lot of time, but I appreciate you taking time to, to talk with me about all of this, man. Okay, I, I just kind of just skimmed through a whole bunch of information. I didn't, yeah, there's, there's information that led, leads up to the information, I mean, to the time period, but I, I just kind of rambling on because I'm kind of tired, but... Uh, um, no, we, yeah, we'll, we'll I, do it again, man. We'll do it again, and then we'll we'll just fill in the blanks. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll work. <laughs> that'll work. Yeah, we can do it again, no problem. Um yeah, I enjoyed. I I don't mind talking about it. It's a just uh, no problem at all. Just, so you seem to be a really guy, nice guy, and everything. You follow my story, so I'm impressed after all these years. So how long you been following my story? Oh man, a long time, a long, long time. time. Yeah, since uh, I think since I saw her. Gosh, I think Lon wrote an article about it a long time ago, or it was on his oh, show, yeah. something like that, and. I, I was hooked right away, man. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is my thing. I, I, I love this stuff. Um, I have my reasons, uh, but I, I, I absolutely love it. And uh, it's it's my thing, man. I, I like to get to the, I like to try to get to the bottom of stuff by yeah. uh, piecing yeah, everybody's story together, you know? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, everybody brings a little bit of different flavor to the table, and uh, everybody should be listened to. That's for sure. To get all the information put together, because like I said, not one person has all the information. <laughs> there just ain't no way. Right, and but, uh, I, I believe that that all this different phenomena that someone would call paranormal is all connected. I really do, and I like that you said that. You kind of said that same thing earlier that it's yeah. all connected, you know, and I like that. It is, and uh, this world is not what we see it as. I swear to God, it's not. Uh, and I, I guess that was just my journey, just to find that out. Is not what it appears to be. 
And uh, and I still haven't figured all that out yet because things are too perfect. So, do you think it's a? Do you think it's? A, what do you think about the uh, theory of it being a? You know the simulation. Yeah, simulation theory. Uh, the, the, I would not throw that too far away from the baseball field. That's uh, uh, it, it quite could be. It could be uh, I even threw away uh, put up. Where like total recall, like you get a lifetime of memories in ten minutes, you know. Uh, but it feels like a whole lifetime. It, it could be something like that. I don't know, but things are things are too perfect, too just way too perfect, uh, or virtual reality. But I, I just feel like I'm in a fish aquarium all the time because uh, I'm always being watched. I never have any privacy. I don't get no sleep because uh, these guys. I mean, when I do sleep. I'm passing out, but yeah. Uh, shoot, man, these guys. I wake up in the middle of the night and they're going through my stuff. They're like cataloging everything, and so I start throwing my pillows at them. So you, <laughs> yeah, you don't get much sleep around here. I swear to God, you don't, man. So it's crazy, um, man. It's crazy. I, I was thinking about having a raffle uh, to see who wants to stay the night at. David Eckhart's house. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, man, I'll do it. That sounds like fun. We'll have a right, slumber man. party. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. I got pictures of my daughter's friends would come over, and I got pictures of entities all over them and stuff, you know? So, wow. I got that on TikTok, too. And uh, matter of fact, I just got one of those SLS cameras where it picks up ghosts or something, and you can see them like in a stick figure. Yeah, you, know, you were aware of those. Well, that works on these guys as well. Uh, really? Yeah. So I'm I'm getting video footage of that as well. So awesome. Well, everybody yeah. can see your videos. It, it you're on TikTok at at Eckhart David too, right? That's right. Yeah. Ec- yeah. That's exactly right. So and that's that's uh, or you can go to Bonds Phantoms and Monsters or Outcast Paranormal or uh, uh, Chronicles of Olivia. Um, or uh, don't mention reptilians too. Um, and uh, or you can go to my know, website. I'm going to post it right on there and right in the show notes, so everybody will there have you it. Go. Fantastic. And uh, yeah, the History Channel put out some of mine. Uh, the entity that was coming out of my bathroom, they had that on there, but I didn't have time to do an interview with them. But they wanted to put my audio up there for the Stargate that opened up, and uh, they want to do another one on that one, but. Oh. Hopefully, I'll have time to get on with them. But, yeah, uh, that would be great. Yeah. So, but, yeah, the history channel is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right, David. Well, hey, man, like I said, I really appreciate you taking time to come on and talk with me. Uh, it was fantastic talking with you, and I appreciate you, man. Okay, no problem, man. I, no problem at all. All right. you have you. We'll do it again, right? That's right. We'll do it again. All right. Sounds great. Thanks, man. Have a good night. You too. Well, that about does it for Dreamland tonight, dreamers. Thanks again for listening, and good night.